Our next speaker is Mr. Varun Nayan, Chief Operating Officer, Skyformix. Mr. Varun has over 20 years of experience in the Indian Army and has served in the Directorate of Systems. He has also served in the global and regional leadership roles in Europe and Asia across multiple verticals including manufacturing, telecom, chemicals, logistics, media utilities and pharma. Let's welcome him over here. He's going to talk about adaptive leadership. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an honor to amongst all of you. Uh, One big question that I had was, uh, you know, uh, Samir said there's some school children and also I have a lot of videos to show and some of them are not for school children. So are there any school children here? No one in school, right? The rest is, everyone's over 18, right? Yes, sir. I just wanted to set the stick, right? So, uh, great. So, we've heard a lot and I think uh, it's been, uh, I thought a lot about this adaptive leadership and well, the first thing I could always do, like all of you would tend to do, is just go to Google. And you get to learn all the stuff that you want to learn on adaptive leadership. But the leadership I'm going to talk to you about is it's more my personal experience over the years. And that's why you know, I'm going to give you a little reference to context of what I have done over these years. Uh, in these 40 years, almost 39 now, the 40th going of work X, right? So, that will be relevant for you. And then I want to share what I think is adaptive leadership. And I'll give you a lot of examples and I have quite a few videos to show you by and by to just set the stage of adaptive leadership. So just be with me. You know, at this stage, at this time, what happens is that you're a little tired, and then, you know, my voice is a little heavy and after some time, you know, it starts to, your eyes start to droop or you start to think about something else. Maybe, you know, the movie you're going to make go to today evening, but not with all the others, right? Or that good looking guy who's, you know, suddenly got a date for you, things like that. Before you know it, you're out of the room. So, uh, my request is stay here if you find that yourself Losing the thread or the track, just stand up and go to the side and you come back again uh, as we go through it. I hope it will be interesting to you. Uh, I've tried to keep it light and easy uh, on a subject like this, right? And like I said, there are no rules, I would say. It's teachings from the Tao. So, just to start, that's me. I love adventure sports. I love doing all of that. What am I doing standing in front of you here? You know why I joined the army? Because I didn't want to study. So as good at sports, as good at all of that, so I said, okay, for jate. Right? And over there, and that's why I'm pointing it out. This is the part. All the B tech, the M tech, the MBA, the IITs, all of that happened while I was in the army. So there's a lot, so I want to talk about adaptive career changes, okay? So we started for almost eight years in those 20 years. And then when I when I left, I left and I joined, and I also did a, did a startup called Orbiting Consulting, got funded by Warburg Pingus for $10 million, five of us. So we talked about failures. We failed. Uh, we recovered some money, but not all of it. But we failed. Huge learning. And so I remember the times when I had to climb on a table and you know, clean the bulb or go into the laboratory and make sure that the toilet is clean because the customer is coming in and you have just that office space. So you have to adapt yourself. And I've been through that part. And then I joined the big company, GE, and we saw them over here uh, on the previous slides, right? And then post that, and in that tenure, a number of places. So I was in Europe, I was posted there. Bucharest, Budapest, all of that. So different cultures. And then I was posted to Japan. Japan with Hitachi, moving a thousand people over. Uh, again, very different culture. Uh, I worked in Australia briefly. Very different culture. But things don't change. 
it's still adaptive, right? Uh, so I'd love for you to ask me questions if we get the time for it, uh, on how it's been, uh, and where is the sense of adaptive leadership in all of this, okay? Now, before I go to the next video for you, just to start you off, okay? It's about 280 seconds. What do you do in 280 seconds to save 155 lives? Increase the volume.
when he gave away, you know, he gave up running and all that and he started golf. When he started golf, he realized his stroke is not good. He stayed up all night practicing 10,000 strokes. So you cannot substitute hard work. Or you say, I want to be an adaptive leader. Well, there's a lot of work before you get to that stage where you can be an adaptive leader. Or we should, we'll share experiences about that. Okay? So 40 years. Now see the next video. Our job is to investigate how a plane ended up in the Hudson River. Oh, the Hudson River. It's a little early in the year to go fishing. Seeking the facts is hardly fishing, Mr. Scott. Okay, then here's the most important fact. There's only two people who know what happened in the cockpit that day, and I'm one of them. And we appreciate your perspective. Why do you even think we're here today? It's because Captain Solomberger did not head back to LaGuardia. Look, I just finished training on the AP-20, and I can tell you the only reason the plane operated as well as it did, that the aircraft could land anywhere, is because Captain Solomberger turned on the auxiliary power unit. He was simply following the QRH. No, no, he wasn't. He wasn't following proper procedure at all. And I know because I had the QRH in my hands. If he had followed the damn rules, we'd all be dead. Yeah. I'll explain what happened for those who didn't catch the, uh, catch the audio. He said, what the captain did was switched on the auxiliary power unit, which as per the logs in reference, and if you see the movie, you'll see it, was the 18th thing to do and switch on. And there was no such logs written or no such thing written as to what you should be doing and therefore they took out the manual and they were trying to solve for it. And what he did was he went 1, 2 and then 18 and he switched it on. And that saved their lives, which is what he was talking about. They saying that's normal manual. He said that's no manual. He was not following rules. Many times when you're in conditions like this, it is those 40 years, it's that 10,000 hours, it's that hard work that you've done which will come up to you naturally. How many times have you gone to sleep and next day morning something just suddenly come to you on a problem that you always were thinking about? <laughs> that is the beginning of adaptive leadership. It just doesn't come. So there's leadership and there's adaptive leadership. So I want how many of you know about the surgical strikes which we did in Pakistan? All of you, right? I'd be surprised if no one knew. <laughs> now, for that surgical strike to take place, 30 of them, how much of practice and how much of effort must have gone into to, to be the battle commanders who would go and do that? Huge amount. I can't even explain to you. Some of you from the army and back forces, you don't understand, but it's tremendous. Why? Because you're going into a situation where you really don't know what it's going to be like. You don't know if there's going to be someone coming here, or someone there, someone there, etc. In corporate life, right, you will not be faced with these situations every day and it's not life threatening. So thank God for that. Okay. But you will find situations of this kind too. Right? So Sorry, I just wait for you to settle. Yeah, okay. So you'll find situations like this too, even in your own, even in your own corporate day to day life. And listen, some of you, especially some of you are thinking of becoming entrepreneurs and things like that, right? You have to be very, very flexible. You don't always will have someone tell you what the rules are. There are no rules. There is only a way of being. So when you get there, it's almost reflexive. Now, if you get there and you don't get there alone, you get there with someone as a team. Not one, not two, quite a few of you, right? The question is, how do you build that connect? So I tell you, when you're going into battle, of course, because that's about life and death and all that, I completely trust him, 100%. I'll, you know, my back is covered by him, so I don't worry, right? Can you translate that into real corporate life where you trust each other completely and you don't worry about who's going to get the credit for it and who's going to get the, you know, get, get killed for it or otherwise, right? Whose bonus is going to get cut? Start thinking about those things and you have to build your connect with your teams and your people as a leader. Before you can even think about adaptive leadership, right? So I want, I want to exchange something with you. When I 
you know those eight years of my work ex which I told you, sorry, my studies. Someone asked me in one of these lectures, and I take quite a few of these. Uh, I think it was in HSBC or something. Uh, one of the VPs got up and he, you know, he questioned me and he said, "So you've got, you know, you've done your computers, you've done this, you've done that. And in all your years of 40 years of experience, 38, 10, what is it that you have used the maximum out of all of this education?" And with no due respect to the alumni, because I've been through such alumni and it's been, it's great. What I said was, what I learned in the first three years in the army is what I practice to date. And what is that? Some very basic fundamentals. And I'll tell you the fundamental. And I'll give you an example. I walk in as a young second lieutenant and I'm a... Okay, those days, nationals, junior nationals, basketball, good swimmer, all of that. So I was a, I was a brigade guy, and I thought I was great. When I went in for my appraisal, all of you understand appraisals, I hope, right? When I went in for my appraisal with my commanding officer in the deserts, and I walk into his office, and he says, sit down, son. And I'm thinking, I've been really awesome. I've done everything right. So I'm going to get a at least an 8 out of 9 or 9 out of 9. And sure enough, he turns around and he gives me the paper and says, well done son, you've done very well, stay the course. And it's an 8 or 9. And I was like thrilled, I said, yes, I know it. And then he said, oh by the way, who, what's your, who's your gunner? So you know, we are in tank regiment, so we had, you have a gunner, a driver, or something like that, four people. So he says, who's your gunner? I said, oh, sir, that's Ravan Singh. Okay. What's his son's name? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I don't know that. He says, okay. Uh, what's his daughter's name? <coughs> sorry, sir, I don't know that. Uh, do you know that she's got a problem with oh, polio? I said, no, sir. Do you know that his wife had suffered from cancer and there was a problem there? No, sir. Do you know that there is some land issue which he has? No, sir. And slowly, as he kept asking me these questions, you know, my, that my tail over there started coming down so fast. And I was losing everything. I just wanted to, you know, the earth to open and me to go inside. Because this, this was not a good way to go during an appraisal discussion. Just after he's given me an 8 out of 9. And then he takes the paper back and he says, I will tear this. If you don't care for your men, you don't deserve this. Come back after two weeks. I'm keeping it here. So what did I do in two weeks? It's very interesting. I had 14 people. I took, took two of those troop diaries, got them together, made everyone sit down. And I said, okay, acha, tum apne pehle ladki ka naam batao, bhai ka naam batao, uska kya problem hai? Hey problem, nahi, nahi problem, nahi. Us, dusre ka kya problem hai? Kuch to problem batao. I'm noting down every little thing. Kitna land hai tumhara? Ye kya hai? Wo kya hai? Father ka naam. So I would, fi I finished that whole diary, you know, in that one week, and I knew everything about all these guys. Till I had one more week to go, and I went to them again, and I would call these guys, and they would see me from far away and say, Sarji, aaj chhod do. Sab kuch bata diye, aur kuch nahi bata diye. And what was the, what, what really happened? In the process, of course I went back and I answered all the questions, but in the process, I got to know my man. So when someone would come late, I would know what the issue is. <laughs> if someone is not shooting straight, I'd say, kya problem hai tujhe? Ghar mein problem hai na? Chuthi nahi hai na? You know, stuff like that. Once you can establish that sort of connect with your teams, and it doesn't matter whether it's corporate. Guys, I've stayed 20 years in the army, 20 years in corporate life. So I'm mixing both the things for you and telling you that. Once you can get that connect with them, you're home. Then you can practice adaptive leadership. Because you know that they will do exactly what you will ask them to do. And they trust you that you will tell them. Even when they think it's not the right thing, they still may do it because 40 years of experience. One. Second, they trust you. Will trust. And the final thing is, you know, is about, uh, I'll 
talk about connectors later. But the final thing that you have to identify with anyone, I'm sorry, I'm from the army, I can't help it. And the ultimate compliment is, I want to take him to battle with me. That is the best compliment someone can give, that means I trust my life with you. And can you get to a state, maybe you can't, but at least you can try to get to that state where you know your people so well and they trust you so much. Now as a leader, these are some basic ingredients before you can even practice adaptive leadership. Right sir? You agree? No, the only reason I asked you was because, you know, it's the same thing, my voice and, you know, slowly you start to sink. So I thought I'd, you know, get you back here. You're back? All right, thank you. Okay. You can give him a hand. Come on, he's back here with us now. Okay. So, so just be here. Just be here for a little while. It's not too long. But it's important for you to... Listen, I'm not married to these ideas. You can take with it whatever you want and throw out whatever you don't want. But if a few of them click to you, it'll help you in your life. Right? I wish someone had told me that to you when I was your age. Okay? So, talking about taking the battles. Let's keep it a little light, it's getting a little heavy. So how should you be? So there is this famous thing, and it's very confusing, so I'm going to walk you through it. it says, he goes to the master, the disciple, and the, he says, give me some gyan. And the master says, see that what you cannot see. And the master says, came back, six months he had to do meditation on it, he meditated on it and then he came back again and he said, Master, how will I see what I cannot see? So, the Master says, you will see it when you can't see. So, totally confused, everything gone right over. And probably most of you are wondering, What's, what is this about? As a leader, your job is not always to get micromanaging everything. You're not letting go and letting the other person who's so good do their own task. You just won't let go. You've got to trust them. They trust you. You trust them. Let them work. Build their confidence. Let it go. And free yourself. Free yourself to look at that what you cannot see. How does it translate into business? You saw all the businesses that have evolved so quickly. What are you doing? What will you do? Because tomorrow the jobs that you all have are not going to be there anymore. And if you're not sitting down and thinking through it, now once you think through it, you'll come up with some solution, something. But if you're so complacent that you don't even think, and you don't even see that what you cannot see, you're finished. So that's what he says. Now, to keep it a little lighter, remember, don't trust everything that you see. That's the point. Face value is not the real value. Think deeper. Issue kya hai? Where is the problem? Where is the solution? Guys, be here with me. Where is the problem? Where is the solution? Look at this. And, and look at this video. Very interesting. Keep your eyes. <laughs> Something else behind that, right? 
the clock. Remember that. See that what you cannot see. There are no rules, right? 40 years, train hard, build trust, see that what you cannot see. Then you're ready. Once you've done all of this, then you're ready. Okay? So one of the things that I, right, and I picked that up over some, and I want to share that with you all. You know, you run into, you run into problems as, life doesn't come like this. Life will keep moving up and down, especially, you know, any life, forget about it. If you're like this, then you're anyway dead. So variations to home your life, right? The trick is, can you look ahead and see? So one of the exercises, when you think all your business is doing fine, especially entrepreneurs and the others who are steady state and all that. I've got myself a great job, Accenture, whatever, whatever. What you should do and get your teams to do is say, do a pre-mortem. Because a post-mortem is when the deal is already done, right? The guy's dead. The business has gone away. The customer is angry. He's taken the business away. Ab karte ro post-mortem. First point, do a pre-mortem. See that what you cannot see. A pre-mortem is you get your team together and say, let's fast forward, time forward ourselves six months from now, one year from now, and say, we lost the business. Now each one of you tell me, and the way I would put it is, I've done a workshop on one day just on this one topic uh, with, with Merce. And tell me, don't tell me about what she didn't do or she didn't do. You tell me, and the way you have to say it is, I Varun screwed up and we lost the business because complete the sentence. So it's not about someone else, it's about you. And gradually you almost have an Excel sheet of a hundred points of why you would have lost the business. The good news is you've not lost the business. That's what you think you will lose if you don't do those things. And you get around to doing them. Okay? So all of this is part of leadership, but now you've got the basics right to look at adaptive leadership because in spite of doing all this, things will not happen the way you think they will happen. I'll give you a live example. I mean, I'm, we just finished it. I won't take names of customers and all. Have you seen the movie Perfect Strong? How many of you have seen the movie Perfect Strong? Where, okay, well, there's a boat which goes in, George Clooney and all, and it overturns and crashes and it's a true story by the way and the people were never found. The perfect storm is when there are a number of things happening which are which are disturbing and you may not know them to happen but suddenly it all comes together and you can't survive it all together like something like the tsunami brewing some other You'll get an earthquake sign, you'll get some other sign somewhere else. But before you know it, it's on you and you just got 280 seconds to, re to, re to react to that. And you can't. Perfect storm. How do you handle perfect storms in your life? Right? That's what, that's what we're really getting into. So, I'll just keep moving. Just keep that at the back of your mind of perfect storms. So, we had this customer. Right? We had one of our best customers very happy with us. We moved business from one side to another. It's a real case study. As we move business, they were trying to complete the backlog. Okay, I've been in financial services so people would understand APER and all that. So you have a huge backlog or you have a huge backlog in the pharma business. By the way, I've never been in pharma business but I'm the CEO for it which just tells you that you really need to have a great experts with you to be able to get into anything that you really want to get to. Right? So don't lose heart. Okay? So if you say, I don't have the expertise, either build the expertise or get someone else better than you and have the gumption and the gold pay him more than you pay yourself. Right? And, and run the business. So in, in the pharma business also similarly the case is kind of just mounting up. You think, okay, this team is a good team. Currently. You call your manager. He says, you know, I've talked to the customer. The customer is happy with it. He says, okay, it's alright, you guys have managed it before. Starting the month. Come December, Christmas, no one's available. Use a mountain. It's going up from 5,000 to 6,000 to 7,000 to 8,000. There's a big visit from uh, the big medical man and he comes over. And we're all concentrating on that inspection and that visit. And 
use a mounting and they're mounting. And then he says, great stuff, very well done over here and all. We go to the next side, he says, oh, by the way, what's happening on those, on that transition? And then the perfect storm happens. We realize that the queues are something like 10,000, 10, 12,000. And the workforce can't handle There's no way in hell they can handle it. What do you do now? A customer says, you got three months. Otherwise, I'm getting someone else. It's like losing jobs. Your decision will make people lose their jobs. Your, you know, if you take it easy, it's going to be a big, big problem for a lot of people, including yourself. So what do you do? And I'm going to teach you this. A, B, C, D, E. It's an easy one to remember. First, whenever you have something like this happening, acknowledge the problem. You'll acknowledge the problem, like if you're sleeping, acknowledge it, accept it, say yes. Yes, good. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. First, acknowledge the problem. Acknowledge it. Say you're sorry. Say you're sorry to the customer. Also, when you say acknowledge the problem, go to your people. The solution doesn't come from you guys as leaders. The power lies with the people. So what I did was we went down, told the people, listen, we're going to lose jobs. We're going to, this business is going to move away. This is how serious it is. Managers will tell you, no, 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 don't tell them to the people. Bullshit. Just go ahead and tell them. Don't try and hide anything from people. Be transparent and share, share your pain with them. When you share your pain with them, they identify it. Solution can't say Who's going to manage those 10,000 views? Only them. You can't hire so many people because by the time you hire them, it will be three months. Right? So, that's the problem. And you heard in the, in the aircraft when they were even crashing, the pilot turns around and says, you got any ideas? Ask them. They'll give you ideas how they can handle it because they are the ones on the ground, not you and I as leaders, as managers. All of this is now happening in real time. There's hardly any time. You went to the people, you told them, they'll come back at all. And therefore, have a, have a war cry. Right? Have you read this book? Screw it. Let's do it. It's by a man who's known, first name is Richard. Come on. 400, 400 enterprises. It's something to do with aircraft, version. One version, which, which aircraft? He's a UK businessman. Branson, Richard Capps. Okay, he's the one who's written this book. It's on the shelves right now. And you see what he writes over there, saying, "Get the people together, tell them, and go and do it together, and get that feeling that we will do it together." Right? You got to motivate them. Now, if you did the trust thing earlier, then they will be motivated. If you were always negative with them and saying, "Oh, tum late aate ho." You always on leave, I don't like you, you don't wear the right clothes, whatever, whatever, whatever. No chance. They'll say, okay, it's your problem, brother. Then they will be with you, right? Now, this is the other part, which is very tough. Now imagine you are, you are in a crisis, you're managing the crisis, you've got your teams together, there is a war cry out there that we will bring the queues down by X, uh, you know, by so and so date. Anything, you just take some challenge. You heard the mayor talking. She gave a vision of what she wanted, those three things. Classic. Described it, went to the people, announced it to the people, communicated it again and again and again to them. Same story. Absolutely adaptive leadership is there, 100%. The way she did it. One person turning around the whole, you know, the whole city. Amazing stuff, what, what she came up with. But that's probably the best. Then there will be times when people will, will start to break. Why will they break? Because they're working like 14 hours, 16 hours a day. They're coming on the Saturdays and the Sundays. They, the customer is still very, very unhappy with you. Willing to take the job away, he's not even willing to talk to you. On the other side, you've got your stakeholders who actually 
and especially your entrepreneurs, the guys who paid your money for you, you know, for your those hundred thousand dollars only, but it means the world for you. Very, very tough. Everyone's piling onto you. And you have to have the resilience to know that this is the right plan and to hold. Hold. The runway and the ATC was telling that guy when they were landing, you go to this runway, go to that runway. He says, no, I will land in the in the river. What a great call. Okay. So you gotta hold. Hold it. Look at this video. How much must you hold? Even 
in your personal life, guys. Personal lives. One more push-up. Just keep improving yourself by one person. One. Just one. Power of one. Okay, there's a song by Donna Summers. One power of one. Just improve yourself. One. That's it. Whether you say one day, say one week, say one month, chalo one year, he says. But karo to say, move it. Right? So that's what he says. One more book. One more friend. One more kiss. Chalega. Okay? One more. Keep that passion. Okay. And that has to be again and again and again. I'm almost coming to the end of my talk. I will go with questions. So you've got all of that, right? 208 seconds, all the rest, so I won't, it's there in the slide in front of you. And now you realize the power of one, and what we can do with the power of one. I'll tell you, in the power of one, there was a time when I've seen a business missing its top line and its bottom line by four million each. I won't take the name of the business and where it was, etc. Four million dollars each, that's a lot of money. Uh, 3,000 people, $4 million each, sometime in June. Called in 300 managers together and said, look, this is the problem. We'll not make it, guys. Because the front-end team is not being able to do it. But you all, 300 of you, and below you, the 2,000 people, 700 people below you, are the ones who know what's happening. You have your connects. <clears throat> the power of one is, just get me one, one FT more. So get me ten thousand dollars more. So anything, just but go make that attempt. Let's say someone says, but I'll have to fly or I'll have to fly to the U.S. and all. Say, your your flight will cost five thousand dollars going and coming in the state. You promise me one guy, I'll make forty thousand dollars. No problem. Go. So we let everyone travel. And all. We made it up. We made it up by November. Now, this was a friend of mine who, who's narrating all of this. So you can. And it's again not about the small. You think that the hurdle is so big that you can't do anything about it. That's adaptive leadership. Because you budgeted everything, everything. Life doesn't happen like that. Things keep changing. Are you ready for the change? Is your team ready first prepared for the change? And then are you ready to swim together, to do things together? Are you ready to prepare for them? Because the, there'll be heavy brickbacks. I tell you, as a leader, there's lots of pressure, tremendous pressure. You pass it on to your people, you're pure. No other way to say it, you're screwed. Don't do it, ever. Hold. Okay? Now, then how? Should you be so nice to your people that you don't stress them out? Oh, no, 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 no. You know, you bichara, ye hoga. Work life balance. Keep work life balance, okay? Saying work life balance. Damn it, the ship is sinking. We're taking in water. You're talking about work life balance. So here's the thing uh, I'll quote, and I met uh, Robert Swan. He is the guy who walked the North Pole and the South Pole. And I asked him, I said, How do you do your work life balance, man? And he said, You know, Varun, I screwed up. I'm divorced. I said, Okay. He said, The problem with work life balance, which I thought, is I mean, I was focusing, I was like a bird. Always like this. It is towards work. Never like this. Work-life balance cannot be like this because sometimes work will require more from you and sometimes home will require more from you. Work-life balance is when you can balance it out over a period of time. So get your families, tell them, look, this is a problem. So when someone tells me, and this happened like just two weeks back, and someone says, I couldn't do any of this. I said, how many hours is, are you working, young lady? And she says, eight hours. I said, in eight hours? <laughs> you're just working eight hours? You know, the guy who's doing 12 is probably working 14 or 12. Why aren't you working 16 hours? I said, that's very stressful. I said, so what? When you prepare for an exam, don't you get stressed out? When you go for a match, don't you stress yourself out? How is this? This is your vocation. This is our vocation. Why won't you stress yourself out? So let me take you to what the Buddha said to Sanoma. This is real. 
So Noma went to the Buddha and said, Lord, give me enlightenment. And the good Lord said, look at the harp. So look at the harp. Kya bole? So he, Sonoma went back and you know, he said, I have blisters in my feet. I've tried enlightenment so, so hard. No, I'm not getting it. But no. he says, look at the harp. He looks and he comes back after a couple of weeks or whatever and says, I can't understand, Master, what is it? He says, have you seen the, st the stream of the harp? He goes back again, comes back again. Okay, so I've seen the stream of the harp. But He says, if it is to lose, it will not play. If it is too tight, it will break. So you have to have stress in the system so that you can play. Life cannot be, ah, oh, okay, hoga. 90% is hard work with your teams together if you want to do adaptive leadership or leadership or even if you want to live your life happily. It's hard work, there's no substitute for it. And there's 10,000 hours. Look at all the people Just, and read a bit more and you'll find you'll figure that out. Okay, so that's what the Buddha said to his disciple. And finally, as leaders, who are the heroes? Who are the heroes? So we, we, we finished with this problem. We made the four, four, four million top line, four million the bottom line, right? You saw the, you saw the stuff the mayor talked about and Indore is like, it's in the limelight and it's, it's so, such a proud moment for everyone over here who's especially from the city, right? Who are the heroes? Is it the mayor? Is it the captain? You would almost think yes. You'd think that he's the Mr. X or the uh, Mrs. X. And you take them away. But you hear this, it's not that. It's all of us. So see this, this is the last of the line. I'd like to ask Anil, you come here and sit here and then go back. Sorry, I don't know if this is the way you do conclaves and I mean, I'm just doing it my style, so I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Alright, just get the one off. I'd like to add something on a personal note. I can say with absolute confidence that after speaking with the rest of the flight crew, with bird experts, aviation engineers, after running through every scenario, after interviewing each player, there is still an X in this result. And it's you, Captain Selenberger. Remove you from the equation and the math just fails. I disagree. It wasn't just me, it was all of us. It was Jeff and Don and Sheila and Doreen. All of the passengers, the rescue workers, air traffic controlmen, ferry boat crews and the scuba cops. We all did it. We survive. Okay, Arsh. Sir, I am also preparing for 
serious and I would be uh, sure I would be a army officer, but before that I would like to ask a question related, uh, relating to leadership politics. Sir, I have cuts, I have politics of becoming a officer, I have a quality of becoming a leader, but somehow I left behind a hesitation. I mean, if I go to any other thing, I have a small doubt in my mind. In fact, if I am doing something with my friends, I have a small doubt in my mind. And that is somehow a problem in my mind. Sir, I would like to ask you, Great, good question. I know it comes straight from the heart because you must be going through it. I can just give you a counter example. We used to do, I took out 100 people for bungee jumping, right? Out of that, uh, not 100, 85. When, we wait, when you go up there and you're on your own and no one pushes you, uh, and this is, this is corporate world, huh? I'm not talking about the army days. No one pushes you when you have to do it on your own. So out of 84, so how many do you think would have jumped from 200 feet on a rope? 10? Huh? None? All? Okay. Oh, that's really ambitious. Okay. Well, you, you're closer because about 75 jumped. Okay, 75 jumped when they saw the other person jump. Now, but they were the 10 who did not. <laughs> We had a camp for three days. At the end of the camp, when I took a session for them, I asked, who are the guys you five did not jump, or you ten did not jump, right? Tell me what happened to you after the jump. You went to your tent, you felt miserable? Yes, sir. Next day morning, you were still miserable? Yes, sir. Did you dream bad? Yes, sir. <laughs> then next day, what happened? You went for rappling and all? Yes, sir. But what were you thinking? Weren't you thinking about the jump you didn't do? Yes, sir. The next day, what happened? We did this, that, that, white water off, everything. What were you thinking of? That I didn't jump. Ask the other 75 who did. Did they even think after that? They must have joked with you once and said, Acha, you didn't jump. After that, you have forgotten about it. But you are carrying your burden with you forever. Get rid of it. Stop thinking about it. Damn it. 10,000 times is what someone said, right? Edison tried again and again and again. Don't care about Hard work. Go for it. Don't worry. And it doesn't matter what the other person thinks. It's you. You living your life. It's you and you alone. Not even your wife. Not even your daughter. Not your husband. Nothing. Just you. Yeah. Okay. Question. Yes, please. Explain. Sure. So, it's an, whenever you are in a conflict situation, typically, frankly, let's, I told you a corporate one, let's say, why not, why not home, standard one, I've been married for 35 years, the standard thing that always happens, right, you have a diff with your wife, let's do the ABCDE on it, right, firstly, someone, someone has to, has to play space, right, and intrinsically you know who's wrong or what, right, and who's going to be, I mean, women always win, I agree, but <laughs> nevertheless, thank you, sir. <laughs> he was the loudest, so I'm going to ask him some questions afterwards. <laughs> but, but, yeah. So, A is, really, firstly, step back and look at actually the, what the issue is. Not about you or him or something else, but what is the real problem. And then, acknowledge the problem. Accept the problem. Don't say, the customer knows nothing, or you know nothing, and you didn't do, and then take out some other thing somewhere else, Zumne Uzdin as a key idea. Acknowledge that there is an issue. Then bridge the issue, right? The problem with, with, with even professional life, personal life is, that we think that the issue at hand is the person. The issue at hand is never the person. The issue at hand is what the issue was. Tumne ye kiya, iska ye matlab nahi hai tum kharao. This this was not okay. Right? And I didn't like it. So start bridging it. Acknowledge it. Say I'm sorry if you are sorry. Bridge it. Then see. Communicate it out. So in this case, I tell you, uh, the, the, med the, the medical officer who was there and whom I met, I stopped the meeting and I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We shouldn't have done this. And then bridging it. What are we going to do? How will we work it out? Uh, things like that. We lost business because of that. But it 
at least we bridged it, we communicated, communicated to whom all, not only to customer, even to each other, to the group itself, be transparent, open, honest with them, A, B, C, communicate. Once you communicate, you're communicating what? You're communicating a plan, your thought, take their ideas, bring it together and then tell everyone else about it. Bring everyone on board. What did the mayor do? She brought the entire city on board with those PA movements, you know, with PAs on the trucks and people getting educated and things like that. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Right? And people then understand it. And then the D is for deliver. Okay? Not for drink. For some of you. <laughs> My army friends. <laughs> okay, so A, B, C, D is delivered and E is definitely enjoy. Then you go back to the other side of the work from home, right? The, the bird. Does it explain it? A, B, C, D, E? Okay. Great. Question. Yes, please. Go ahead. Abhishek. My question is. to the idea. Yes, I said that. Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. My ABCD interview. I married an idea, but it got work. So how one should hold that idea? I was doing my MPhil yes. in your studies. Yes. And somewhere it's not approved by the committee. Yes. Ah, lovely one. Terrific question. And I get this this often. Equivalent. How one should hold that? Because no one to I'll tell no you. one is there to guide me and <coughs> I will tell you. I'll tell you. You worked hard for it, right? Yeah, I did it. And uh, somewhere it was acknowledged by some other person. But the committee didn't approve that. The committee didn't. So somewhere there was a kind of a failure, like that, right? Yeah. Okay. How many times in life will you go through this where you will aspire to the next level and you will not get it? In spite of the fact that you very well know that you are the one who deserves it, but the guy next to you may make it, or someone else across the board will make it, or somewhere else someone will make it. So this is, it's common. I always tell people, 90% is hard work and then there is 10% of destiny. The zone that you fell in is destiny and you can do nothing about it. And the moment you accept it and let it go, you will be free. I ruined my whole camp because I just didn't do one thing. So what? You have to let the next. Oh, I think Samir said it very well. He says we have to let our people make failures, you know. And what does it mean by failures? To let it go. It's okay. Learn from it. Then it becomes personal. So you work very hard. Others acknowledged it, but the person you want acknowledged did not acknowledge it. Let go. Even in love. You work very hard. What try the idea? If it hasn't happened, then leave it, man. Let's go. I'm going to feel miserable, I'm going to get drunk, I'm going to do... I don't know, youngsters, if you do that still, I mean... Our times, maybe I've been different. Sorry, I'm not looking at you, man. I'm not looking at you. Okay, I, I hope that helps. I don't know. Yeah. I'd love to talk to you over lunch because I'm just talking to you from lunch. Yeah, but go ahead. Anyone else? Huh? So... Thank you, Yosef. My name is... Doctor, I'm a medical engineer. You know, we have reached the limit of the medical engineer. You permit me to just share with you. Yes, sure. Yes. Take three or four minutes. Gentlemen, I was posted in aircraft carrier somewhere in 1983. This is just related to the adaptive story. And when we were coming from Indian Ocean to the Indian Ocean, there is a Gulf of Manar, which is falling between Indian Ocean and Indian Ocean. 
This is plane is approximately 250 kilometers long and it is quite rusty. That day my helicopter was there. Blade folding system was not working. So what I discussed with Captain and he said, okay, let's put the aircraft on top of the ship, secure it nicely and then we'll go. That day night, wind was very heavy in the sea. Wind velocity was almost 80 to 90 km. And the ship was rolling, pitching heavily 10 meter this side, 10 meter this side, 20 meter upside, downside. And we were having very tough time. Around uh, 1 o'clock in the midnight, my another sister who was posted there at the, on duty at hangar, looking the aircraft from the hangar on the deck. What is he saw? That aircraft blades are almost going to the sea. One side and coming to the other side. That fellow, he ran to my room and says that today we are going to lose the aircraft. The cast of the aircraft was anti summary helicopter, KMO 25, and almost 90 to 100 crore cast was there. The height of the aircraft is around 14 to 16 feet from ground, right. top of the plate. Right. Now, it's very difficult to save the aircraft. That time, I was approximately, I am talking to you now approximately 32 years before. Now I am 64. That time I was 32 years old. Now, my duty was to save the aircraft, 100 crores of work and profit. What did you do, sir? And I, I am an engineer, I was not very good leader. I had two people with me and the whole six company. And heavy was just coming from the sea. Deck was full slippery and wind velocity you can say 90 to 100 kilometers. Now, it is the first duty to save the property. That is the time this adaptive leadership which sir has told. It just clicked in my mind that I must share this story with you so that somewhere it will be helpful. Now, captain was from executive branch. He was not an engineer, he was not an aviator. He said, you tell someone what you have to do. I will do what you want to say. I told her, sir, I have two things to advise you. Number one, to change the direction of the ship. <laughs> State from going change against change the wind, you should go to the bitter wind so that some velocity will come, come down. And then we should keep 50 people from the ship's company ready when we say push. So that time someone comes and push the helicopter into the lift lobby. So we get the lift lobby on and my the technician I told him go on top, we will hold him plates in emergency. He went on top, he was touching the ship. Because in one minute the ship was rolling pitching. He said, Sir, I am alone, son of my father. <laughs> my parents, I am alone. Please leave me. Wow. I had no choice. I told him, okay, come down. I myself put the life band, went on top, we kept 50 people ready there on board ship. And it was very, very difficult. It was just like you can say, Kargil Bar. This is a great, great example. And what I did, I put an emergency plate folding system in the plates, and then blade was folded. And before we opened this chains, you know, chains of the helicopter, where it was tightened with the deck. Captain was standing with holding hand and someone loosened it and said push. And at one push, what sir given one push, then one push took the helicopter inside and you won. So I thought, I will say it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Fantastic example sir. Thank you very much. Were you trained for this? No. You are not trained how to push aircraft in, when, in such a situation. It is. What came at that point of time is what, like the captain said, all those years, just 
that, in more, that bank of experience just came and saying the direction of the ship and people need to push it at the same time and do it. It's just so second nature. That was a fantastic example of adaptation. Absolutely. It's big hand, please. Uh, I am Arjuna Sharma, founder of Prashya Bliss Your Happiness Parker. So, uh, like, uh, you share so good uh, uh, strategies on uh, leadership and what are the qualities of leadership. I would just like to know your view, or you could ask that which is the biggest leadership quality one should have. I just want to know your view. So, which is that quality and why? Is it that? Sure. I must say, I've been asked that before, so I'll, I'll say it again. In all the stuff that, over all these years, if there's, if there's one thing which I think has stood by me all the time is passion. If you want to do something, then do it with passion. How many of you have been in love? Raise your hands. Yeah, no love. Never loved anyone. Come on, how many of you have been in love? Come on. What is the feeling like when you are in love? Fine. Does it matter if it's raining, yeah, it's sunshine, or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your boss is a, you know what, and it's a pain in the body. It doesn't matter because you're in love. Anything, if you can take a little bit of that feeling and put it into your everyday work, you will transform yourself. CAO sir to please present a short and memento to sir.